Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I'm back in a new year after about a week of downtime. Luckily, no major issues throughout this week. So hopefully you didn't have to rush into the office to deal with any emergencies. A couple of our handlers were quite busy during the week and we have a number of neat diaries that you probably want to catch up on if you didn't have a chance to read them last week. For example, Didier talked about how to deal with obfuscated RTF files. RTF files are still often used in order to smuggle various office exploits into environments. And in a second diary, Didier is talking about analyzing TNF files. That's the transport neutral encapsulation format that's used by Outlook and Exchange. And Xavier looked back at last year and the huge number of CVE numbers that were published. We had about 14,700 CVE numbers published. That's more than double what we had before 2016. We had about 6,400. The record so far was 2014, which was 7,900. Now realize that last year the CVE numbering changed actually allowing for more than four digits in the CVE number. And in addition, I think also a little bit the philosophy of MITRE that runs the CVE system changed. There was a lot of criticism that it was too difficult to obtain a CVE number for some vulnerabilities. And I think they changed it and are now a little bit more open and easier in handing out CVEs. Bug bounties and such may also have helped here as Xavier points out. And Xavier also notes that we now have a number of CVEs for sort of non-traditional sources, like for example, cars. There's one for Tesla. There's another one for BMW. We also have one for Mealy home appliances. So really the internet of things here is certainly taking a hold in the CVE system. And sticking with the internet of things here for another story and also likely a Christmas presence. If you received a Sonus or a Bose speaker with internet access, well, uh, better make sure that you're not allowing incoming connections from the internet to the device. As so often in devices like this, there are unauthenticated admin interfaces that at the very least allow an attacker to view the status of the device, but also, for example, play sounds through your speakers. Luckily, it looks like there is no listen capability in these devices. So the only thing an attacker could possibly do is play music or play sounds. Now, also looks according to Shodan that most users got the message and are not exposing these devices. I think this is really one of those cases where NAT really saves a lot of users and uh, only about 5,000 of these devices are exposed to the internet according to Shodan. And then we got an old issue in login managers or password saves that are built into the browser that sort of resurfaces again with a privacy twist to it. The problem here is that many of these tools are automatically pre-filling login forms. Now, typically that's what the user wants the tool to do, but malicious JavaScripts, or in this case, well, not really sure if it's malicious, at least it's maybe not ethical JavaScript that's used to track users is then automatically submitting the form and exfiltrating a hashed copy of the user's email address in order to track the user across different sites. So the advertisement code here is essentially adding a form field that's labeled email address. The password safe will automatically pre-fill that and then JavaScript will submit a hash of this email address. At this point, it doesn't look like this is being used in order to exfiltrate passwords, but apparently this is a somewhat widespread with about a thousand websites among Alexa's one million using this particular technique. 
Two companies in particular, AdThink and OnAudience, appear to use this technique and also advertise that they will then supply their websites that are using their service with additional user demographics. So your website may actually use this technique if you subscribe to any of these companies. The article also lists uh, the particular URLs that are being used by these two services. So you could probably easily block those two domain names being used. But of course, uh, they will very quickly change this. Well, at the end of last year, I mentioned how the CAPTCHA plugin for WordPress was backdoored. Well, it turns out that the same backdoor has been found in three additional plugins since then. The most popular one, Duplicate Page and Post, has 50,000 active installs. And just like with the CAPTCHA plugin, these plugins were purchased by a particular search engine optimization company that then added the back door to them. Well, and this is it for today to get you started for the new year. Now, last year I had a little contest going where whoever notifies me of me using the wrong year during the first month uh, will be entered into a drawing for a free Raspberry Pi. I am going to do a little variation on this. Uh, last year it wasn't really all that successful because apparently I didn't use the wrong year during the month of January. Well, uh, what I'm gonna do this year is that I'll be giving away actually five different Raspberry Pis and I'll extend it a little bit where I will accept any submission of any factual error that I'm making uh, during this podcast. That's bound to happen. So if you notice anything wrong, drop me an email or use the contact form at the ISC website. And at the end of the month, I'll then draw five of the submissions for the Raspberry Pi. And again, the assumption is that you will use the Raspberry Pi as a sensor to contribute to the shield. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.